Hello everybody and welcome to my channel and this time we'll be doing something a little bit different, okay? This time we'll be talking through the popular now boilproof mana base, which uh, which yeah is very popular among Blue Red players and I think it was like pioneered by Spiring Spike with Blue Red Breach and now TMO and Blue Red Kiki. So I wanted to um, talk through the upsides and downsides of playing such a mana base. So this is what the mana base look like, looks like, uh, with just a few basics, but other than that, non-basic, 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 we've got these basically four play sets and two like utility lands in Oboro, which doesn't do much, and Minamo, which lets you untap a Kikijiki, but again, that's just, it's like a non-island island, because it's untapped, and only one of us because they are legendary. And so what's the contrary to that mana base? A fetchland, shockland based mana base, obviously, which has been popular for or forever, right? With scalding tarns and blue fetches and steam vents and any, and any other color for that matter. So let's do, let's look through the upsides, okay? First, sketch of the sky skyclaves, okay? So it looks at the highest life total. So with this mana base, your life total doesn't change. Like it's painless, absolutely painless. So obviously, sketch of the skyclaves is just a bit a bit less of a threat than it normally would be, which is a threat, a big threat against deck with bolts. Even mind sense and Leonin Arbiter, like this 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 this, this duo of, of white creatures which are playing in, in white taxes decks. Again they care about searching your library and you don't, right? Like you don't crack your fetches. Obviously they have their own effects like Ghost Quarters, but again it doesn't compound to the effect, right? Like Probably all of you have had situations that you kept a hand, which has like, you know, double chocolate, double fetchland, or, or triple fetchland for that matter, right? Or maybe you had like a shockland, fetchland, fetchland, and you began with a tapped shockland. And then there is Leon in Arbit, and you wish you'd, you'd fetched earlier, proactively, right? And you just get caught off guard, it's difficult to, to actually play your spells. So with this mana base, both neither sensor nor arbiter are a problem. Additionally, Ashok Dream Runners, people really like bringing in blue decks. Again, doesn't do much. So, people really like it because they think they will win by milling, which is rarely the case, but, but people do. And if they do, then that's not a problem, because we don't search our library at all. Finally, we don't fold to choke. That's great. As a blue player, just, just seeing choke makes, makes, me, makes me puke. And now we've got Ether Gas, so at least that helps a bit. But still, Choke is just a beating, you know? And now, finally, we don't care about it, right? Neither do we care about Boil. Boil has become super popular because of Sanctuary decks, right? And it was like a one card, I win. So all the John decks, Red decks, just, just, just put it in and hope for the best. And, 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 and they did get the best of it, because whenever a blue player blinks, they just get their whole land base swept away. So now with this deck, this heavily played card is not a problem. People build their decks, s devoting two or three slots to blue decks, and most of them being boil, and now you dodge these slots, right? Which is great. Now, on the flip side, you yourself get to play Boil. So now you basically join the team. So now you get a huge edge in the mirror match. Because now you boil other people and you don't get boiled. Right? So that, that's huge. Additionally, you've got Dryad of Elysian Grove decks. Right? Which, let me show you that. Which is popular in all the, like, Titan decks. And it makes all lands of all types which means also all islands. And if that's the case, it means that when your opponent plays it in their green-white titan deck, you can, you can still boil them to death, which I've done. So that's another pl upside of playing your boil yourself, right? And with snap customage in your deck, you can go boil, snap, boil, which I've also done, uh, when, when your opponent is very stubborn not to concede. So yeah, so you don't lose to choke, you don't lose to boil, and you also get to play boil yourself. 
Archive Trife is another th another card which uh, Blue Black Mill ha no, has always... It's, it's, it's the best card in Mill, and Mill has been picking up in popularity due to them getting the another four of a crab from Zendika Rising. And now you don't get caught again when fetching, right? And you have to fetch because that's your mana base. Now here, it doesn't matter, right? Additionally, there are smaller things like, yeah, so you don't have life loss, so it helps against red decks a bit, right? Because you don't lose life. It helps against scape shift decks because you don't lose life down to 18, for example. It helps against cards like Creeping Chill, which targets your life total, and Blue Red is known for not having much life gain, right? Uh, maybe when you when you use serum visions, your scry is retained on the bottom, right? You don't shuffle things back into your library, right? The same with opt. You you, you get to play lands like Minamo or Oboro. Well, while Oboro is not the best, Minamo is actually quite good with Kikijiki, right? And maybe you can find some other examples of, of, of lands which just come in handy, right? Because you can afford to play them because they don't need to be island, right? Um... Some other very, very minor uses would be, for example, the fact that you don't... So you don't fetch, so you don't put lands into graveyard, so opponents go if it's a bit smaller sometimes. So you could find some other smallish aspects of the mana base, which are positive, right? So plenty and plenty of advantages, right? So what's the reason not to play that? Is there any reason not to play such a mana base? Yes, there are. Absolutely there are. Mainly these three. Okay, so let's go through these three. One, you don't get to play Jace the Mind Sculptor. Uh, I mean, you, you can, but you don't have fetches to fetch 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 away the Brainstorm. So Jace is much weaker, and Jace is a great card in control. Two, you play a blue-red deck which falls to Blood Moon, right? So you, you, you don't fall to Choke, but you now fall to Blood Moon. And you don't play Blood Moon yourself. So, like, so in classic blue-red, blue you would play Blood Moon yourself. Now, you not only... Not only do you not play Blood Moon, but you also fall to Blood Moon. So why is that? Is that the big difference? I mean, kind of, because if you don't play Blood Moon yourself, you lose to Mono Red Prowess, Red Green Ponza, and some other random and Blue Moon. And if you play it yourself, you could have it against Junt, against Titan decks, against uh, Tron, against all the four color decks, right? So and also, yeah, that's not irrelevant, and. The elephant in the room, Mystic Sanctuary. You don't get to play this. You know, like this is the reason why people play Boil, and you don't have that reason. So now, like, yeah, you dodge Boil, but you also don't play this busted engine, which made the whole thing start. So that's a big thing. And now there have been versions of blue decks which have like you no know, four cryptics, four Archmage's charms, really abusing Sanctuary. Like you never have a dead top deck. You always have gas. You just always keep on going, right? You reuse everything you need all the time. So, that's a big difference, okay? That's a big, big difference. And you're more likely to flood because you don't have such a control of what you draw. And now it compounds because you not only not only do you not play Sanctuary, but you also don't play Jace. And normally you'd play probably both of them, which would make the games much easier, right? Um, you don't get to put on top some, for example, you could normally play like a one of fact of fiction potentially, right? To put it on top and it's like with Sanctuary, a one of spell actually is much more valuable than, than that one spell because you can get to reuse it a lot, both with Snap and Sanctuary. And now there is, you don't have a dynamic. Additionally, with these seven lands, your first land drop doesn't do anything. So your spell snare is dead. You you cannot possibly turn one serum visions or opt. You cannot turn one bolt, and that's huge, because your hand contains you know some removal spells. And let's say you're on the draw with the bolt, you still can't bolt on turn one, right? And one can say okay, but you've got you know nine red sources, so potentially maybe you can play a red source first. Sure, but then if you play a mountain. Or if you play this flipped as a red land, then the reflecting pool as, as your second land also produces only red. So now you're stuck on red, right? So you need Cascade Bluffs to help the hand away, right? So it just makes mana very awkward. 
also double cascade bluffs, double reflecting pool are not keepable situ hands, right? I've had situations when I had, for example, island double cascade bluffs, and you can't really multi-spell. You have to proactively add mana and do something. You can't really wait on your spells. Additionally, Spy Bluff Canal is always a top land past turn 3, and this deck always goes past turn 3. Yeah, like it wants to play long, so you're, you're, you're guaranteed to have a top land, which in a cryptic deck is like is not a place you want to be in. And in a Kiki deck, again, you would really want a fifth untapped land. Breach deck, same thing. So that's not a minor thing. Uh, you also, like, when you play cards like Magmatic Sinkhole, you can't fill your graveyard as easily, which you would with fetches, right? Um, another huge point is that you, ca you can't, with this build, you ca with, with this idea, you can't go three color. So you can't play Jeska, you can't play, you know, blue, red, whatever else, Grixis. You can't, it's impossible, right? You can't play Tima, Rug, you can't play Rug. For example, you no know, Rug with Uro, let's say, you just can't. Right? Because the mono base can't support three colors. Uh, against one of the top decks, we've talked about like top decks here, another type of top deck, which is Red Green Ponza. So not only that, no, don't, are we host by Blood Moon, we're also host by Land Destruction. Because against Ponza, normally you just play Fetch Land and a Cracked, and then you, which would blank all the pillage effects, all the Land Destruction effects, right? You could, they can't destroy a Fetch Land, you could, you'd fetch in response. But here, you just walk straight into it, right? Um, so there are downsides, as you can see, right? You, so you don't play Jace, Blood Moon, Sanctuary, you get host by Blood Moon. You don't fill your, your graveyard. You don't have one f f uh, um, turn one mana, plenty of times, the tapped canal, the double pull, double cascade bluff, hands. So what's the answer? So what's the answer? Is it good to have such a mana base or is it bad to have such a mana base? Obviously, tough call. The thing is that when you have a fetch shock, fetch shock mana base, you can play any control deck. When you want a boil proof mana base, you have to play blue red. Right? I mean, you have to play red to play the boil, right? If you want to play boil. Uh, you can just you could maybe play like a what? Blue black control? Uh, and just not to foil, fall to boil and just still keep the same core, you know, blue black flip, blue black fast. Yeah, I guess, right? But then again, you don't lose to boil, but you lose this aspect of playing boil yourself, right? Which is big, because because you don't get to, play, so yeah, you don't lose to boil or choke, but now you, you still lose to blood moon, you don't get to play boil yourself, and you don't you don't really have an, a such a good edge in the mirror match. Right, because they get the sanctuary and you don't. Obviously, Mirror is one of the, of the, uh, one of uh, different uh, decks, right? But against red decks, red decks sometimes play Boil, sometimes they play Blood Moon, so it, you really don't really know, and you will lose to either. So it's better to play the best version uh, in the vacuum because one loses to Boil, one loses to Blood Moon, right? Choke is not that popular. So I think just to conclude. I think it really depends, and if you can, if you think you can abuse boil, I'd play this mana base. So, but I think yeah, it would be like to abuse boils, so probably like when there are some other blue decks floating around, Titan decks floating around, and some other people who who really bank on boil being good. But overall, I think I personally would go with the Sanctuary mana base because it just provides so much utility, so much flexibility. Is just you know there is a reason why it's so powerful. So yeah, I think I think I would rank uh, Sanctuary Mana Base like always default best, and then this Mana Base situationally better maybe to catch somebody off guard maybe in a certain Mana Base is in a certain meta game, maybe when the result of burn from the, like burn burn not prowess like actual burn, and then then the, this this um. Lack of life loss will actually be beneficial, but again, you're stuck to blue red, right? So you don't play Uro, you don't play Teferi, uh, which is which is clearly a down. So you don't have a cryptic lock, so you're playing blue, a blue deck without a cryptic lock. Um, so I myself would probably go for a actual sanctuary mana base.
Thank you for watching. I, I hope it, it's been useful for you. I think, I hope you've, you've learned something. Uh, let's discuss in the comments down below. I will gladly, I will gladly discuss the topic. And as always, thank you very much for watching and please remember to hold my hand. Let's pass the turn together and see you next time. Cheers.